Hi everyone, I have invited Dr. Jennifer Hoshuli over to my house today because she is a neuroscientist and she is going to tell me all about my brain scans. So what do you think we're going to learn today? So today we're going to look at your brain scans and we're going to look at the different lesion sites in your brain and maybe learn a little bit more about the brain and how the lesions might match up with some of the deficits that you're experiencing. Great, so let's go inside and we will look at all of those scans. Awesome. All right, so now we're looking at some scans from Rebecca's brain. Um, and these are, this is a scan that was taken when the injury initially occurred, when the AVM ruptured. And so the images are showing us that the angular gyrus is the region in the brain um, where the AVM was located and where you had your stroke. Um, and that reading impairments follow that. So it might be helpful to look at where the angular gyrus is in the brain. So if we pull up a diagram of the brain, we can, here we have our outside of the brain. So the brain has four major lobes. We have the frontal lobe, parietal lobe, occipital lobe, and temporal lobe. And the angular gyrus is located in the parietal lobe. Um, and so if we have deficits or damage to the angular gyrus in the parietal lobe, you would expect to potentially see some reading impairment, some reading deficits, that it's a part of the brain that we know is involved in reading ability. And we also know that lots of different parts of the brain are involved in reading ability. So the frontal lobe, the temporal lobe, parietal lobe, and occipital lobe are all necessary for reading to happen smoothly. So I think maybe six months to a year after you had your injury, you had some follow-up scans and we were together with some friends and you were showing us your scans and we noticed, oh, this is interesting. It looks like the lesion in your brain or the hole or where the tissue is missing seems to be lower down. It seems to be more in the temporal lobe um, than in the angular gyrus where we would expect given where the stroke happened. So that was surprising and at a later visit to the neurology office you let me come along and we got to see the scans that the neurologist had and she was showing us where the lesion is in the brain confirming that there is tissue loss in the temporal lobe. So does that still make sense with your reading impairments? And, and it does. So we can show you um, what the scans look like that we saw at the follow-up at the neurology office. Um, if I can get to them, okay, click out of all of this. Okay, so what we're seeing here to orient yourself is a slice or a section through the brain. It's a horizontal section through the brain. So if I took a knife and cut from your eyes to the back of your brain, that's what we're seeing. And we're seeing it sort of the eyeballs. You can see here's the front of the brain here, back of the brain here. Um, and that where, where the slice is coming through is lower down in the brain. It's in that temporal lobe region rather than higher up in the parietal region where the angular gyrus is, it's a little bit lower down. And the weird thing about looking at these scans is that they're backwards. So neuroscientists like to complicate things that this is actually the left side of the brain, although it's on the right side of the screen. This is the left side of the brain and that is where Rebecca's stroke was on the left side of the brain. So the back is that occipital region. Um, so if you think about it, when you're reading, it's a visual stimulus. You're looking at the letters. So the input is visual and it's processed in the visual occipital cortex. And then it would move through the brain and a couple different things can happen. So we know that there's two sort of broader pathways for reading. If I come back out to my larger diagram, generally speaking, when things are processed in the visual cortex, they move ventrally, ventral is a term that we use to mean the bottom in neuroscientific terms, into the temporal lobe to identify what the object is. If we need to interact with that object, researchers and scholars have discovered that information moving from the visual cortex dorsally, and that's our fancy word for top, into the parietal lobe, helps us reach out and interact with objects in our environment where they are. So that's broadly speaking, but in terms of reading, when information is coming out of visual cortex and moving into the angular gyrus, that's where the little, the letters, the graphemes that you see are connected to the sounds like b, p, k. So auditory processing or processing of the sounds happens here in the temporal cortex and is matched up. So you see there's linking here between the sound and the visual region. And that linking is sort of of the 
the, the letter symbols with the sounds and that's being connected in Angular Gyrus and there's a bit of meaning processing happening there too. So what's going on here with the temporal lobe? Well, as we become more skilled readers, researchers and academics in the field have found that you don't have to phonetically decode the word each time you read it. Eventually you recognize it instantly and you're almost recognizing the word, so a visual form recognition. And that we, we believe is happening more in this area of the brain, in this lower temporal, ventral, occipitotemporal pathway. And so it would make sense that you would still see reading impairments in that with tissue damage in that region. So we've learned a lot here about reading that we have temporal parietal regions that are important and that's where the stroke was originally centered, but we also have occipital temporal or occipitotemporal pathways that are important for reading too. And to give you the complete picture, they link up with areas in the inferior frontal gyrus or the bottom gyrus uh, to connect how we produce the sounds, the b -p -k, the motor programming to actually produce those also gets linked up with these areas. So there's a crosstalk across large swaths of the brain surface um, that's happening here. So as a stroke survivor, it's always been important to me to understand what happened in my stroke to understand the parts of the brain that were damaged because from there you can piece together a purposeful future understanding the lesions understanding what was lost and how you can compensate um, and and to, to better understand neuroplasticity so i'm really grateful to have you know dr hashuli uh, who is also a dear friend um, she's a lecturer at our local university in london ontario and she um, is able to give me this information. I think a lot of stroke survivors would really like to have more information so that we can better understand what the future can look like as well. Um, and so I recognize that I'm really lucky to have someone who can come in and tell me what with my brain and uh, what I can do for the future. So thank you for doing this video with me today. I appreciate it and I wish everybody a really great day.